Okay, so in this video, this is my first video in my genetics playlist for my general biology class, and I'll be discussing phenotype, genotype, dominant, and recessive. So what we're looking at in our genetics unit is how we inherit our traits uh, from our parents. And in reality, what's being passed from parents to offspring is our chromosomes. And chromosomes are made out of DNA. So it's, and proteins. So it's said that DNA is our molecule of inheritance. And so really though, how is it, if we get half our DNA from our mom, half our DNA from our dad, um, how does that DNA determine who we are, right? How does a sequence of A, T, C, and G determine if I have brown or blue eyes? And how can two parents have multiple offspring if one offspring has brown eyes and another one has blue eyes? Like, how is this possible? And that's what we're going to uh, seek to understand in this genetics unit. So before we can do that, let's kind of uh, set the groundwork for our chromosomes and how they work. So um, when a sperm fertilizes an egg, we can see how the egg has 23 chromosomes and the sperm contributes another 23 chromosomes. So when a zygote is formed, the zygote has two of each kind. So we, having two of every kind of chromosome, are called diploid organisms. So here, this might be a picture of all of the chromosomes in an egg. And then when a sperm fertilizes the egg, well, now here's the other half. So we have two number ones, two number twos, two number threes, etc. Now, when we talk about inheritance, we're gonna um, talk about our genes and our traits as coming in pairs. Like you inherit, uh, for example, like a dominant allele from your mom and a recessive allele from your dad. We're always gonna talk about it in pairs because we have two of every kind of chromosome. So we can divide our chromosomes even further into two different categories. So we have autosomal chromosomes that really deal with our genes and our traits and our genetics that has nothing to do with developing into a male or a female. So these are our uh, traits for like hair color or height, or do you have freckles, you know, like non-sex determining genes. And then we have some chromosomes that are our sex chromosomes that do carry the information for us to, to develop into a male or a female. So when we talk about genetics and inheriting traits, we can divide genetics into two categories. You have Mendelian genetics, which is really gonna look at how traits on chromosomes one through 22 are passed from parents to offspring. And then you have non-Mendelian genetics, which part of that is how traits are passed on sex chromosomes, on Xs and Ys. So my first couple of videos will deal with Mendelian genetics, which is how traits are passed from parents to offspring on chromosomes one through 22. And then we'll have a whole separate video on the special uniqueness of traits carried on the X and the Y chromosome. Okay, so let's go ahead though and look at um, uh, how genetics works. But before we can do that, we have to define a couple words. So our first vocabulary word is phenotype. Now your phenotype is basically your physical expression of traits, uh, like what someone can see when they look at you. So you have like eye color or hair color or um, whether or not you have freckles or dimples. So your phenotype are the observable characteristics. But I also want to point out that sometimes uh, like your inside can also be your phenotype. For example, I'm B positive uh, for my blood type. So that would be my phenotype is B positive. Um, uh, even though it's on the inside, you can't see that by looking at me. Now, I also found this super interesting where, um, this is like from Google, where you have, uh, it also, I guess I should point out, that your phenotype though can also be influenced by the environment. So we're gonna see here in a minute that your phenotype is actually based on your genotype. So your genotype is, your like DNA that you inherited that carries the code or the directions to form your traits or to give you your phenotype. So your genotype determines your phenotype, like what directions did you get from your parents? Now, I wanna go back though to this right here. 
Um, so your phenotype, a more accurate definition is, um, it is your traits based on your genes and how they interact with the environment. So for example, I do have brown hair, uh, but when I was younger, I was on the swim team and I was outside all the time and my hair was much blonder. The sun was like bleaching it. So my hair was a lot blonder. So that would be my phenotype. But in reality, my DNA says, my DNA says to have brown hair. So sometimes the in environment can also influence your phenotype. But generally speaking, your phenotype is based on what genes you inherited, which is your genotype. Okay, so uh, our genotype is our complete set of genetic material. So let's go ahead though and look at how does our DNA, like how does our genotype, our DNA actually influence and create these physical traits? So if I look at this chromosome here, let's pretend that like a brownish section is a section of my chromosome that says, hey, you know what? You're going to have brown eyes. So yes, I have the directions in the DNA, but how do I actually get the brown that you see when you look at me, right? So that's what I'm going to teach you. And then another person, though, could inherit like a DNA directions that says, hey, let's have blue eyes. So in the DNA, the directions is our genotype, but what you actually see is your phenotype. So where is the connection between those two? So when we look at DNA though, DNA uh, carries genes. We talk about these genes as being the directions for make us who we are. Well, it turns out that genes code for proteins. So, uh, but before we can even discuss that, let's talk about these two chromosomes here. When I mentioned earlier, how you get one chromosome from your mom and you get one chromosome from your dad, you have a pair of chromosomes. You have a pair of chromosome one, a pair of chromosome two, a pair of chromosome three, et cetera. So here we have some uh, homologous chromosomes, one inherited from the dad, one inherited from the mom. And in our first example, we're talking about eye color. So this uh, section in red is the region of the G of the DNA, of the of the genome uh, where we're going to talk about eye color. But what you notice is that the dad is passing on the information of how to make brown eyes and the mom is passing down the information or directions on how to make blue eyes. So here we have a gene for eye color, but there's different directions going on. There's different versions of this gene. There's different forms. So we actually call this when there's different forms for a gene. We call these alleles. So alleles um, are different forms of genes. So in this picture here, there's the allele for brown eyes and there's an allele for blue eyes. That just means there are different forms possible. So uh, for like dimples, you have the allele for dimples or you have the allele for no dimples. Okay, so let's go ahead though and look at how, right? So I just mentioned a minute ago that our genes a code for proteins. And it's really the presence or absence of proteins that determine our phenotype. So sure you inherit your DNA, but what you do with the DNA is what determines what you look like, your phenotype. So here we have some DNA and let's uh, say that it has the brown eye allele. And this section of DNA right here is going to code for a pigment or a protein called melanin. So melanin is a human pigment or protein that gives us um, like brown eyes or darker skin. Um, it's our one of our like human pigments. So this section of DNA right here uh, says to make me melanin. But in actuality, it actually says to make a lot of melanin. So you can see that eye as we watch. So if you haven't learned yet in your biology class, so DNA has our genes. And then in a process called protein synthesis, that DNA is copied into RNA. And then the RNA is the directions to build a protein. So now uh, the protein that we are building in our eyes um, is melanin. So you can see this eye as that melanin is produced, uh, the eye appears brown. And so here, this section of DNA is coding for a lot of melanin to be produced. So as you look at me with my brown eyes, my DNA in my eyeballs has the directions to make this melanin and it's actually producing a lot of it. So you actually are seeing the melanin when you look at me. Okay, 
Now, what about blue eyes though, right? Uh, so when we talk about alleles and different versions of genes, really what that is, is that mutations happen to create these new variations. So in that region of the DNA that codes for blue eyes, that's from a mutation in humans about 6,000 years ago. And the DNA sequence changed where now people with this allele actually uh, still produce melanin, but they make way less of it. And this actually gets into more physics, um, but really pigments uh, are proteins, but they absorb and reflect light. So in plants, like chlorophyll is the green pigment in a plant that absorbs and reflects light. So here, um, the people with blue eyes, with less melanin, it really comes down to how that light coming in is absorbed and reflected, that uh, it's different than people with brown eyes. And therefore, the way the light bounces off and is absorbed, you actually will see blue eyes. Uh, so they don't make a blue protein, but rather they just make less brown protein and uh, their eyes appear blue. So when you see the phenotype of eye color, brown or blue eyes, it's the DNA that is different. It's different alleles coding for this. So the genotypes are different and creating different phenotypes. But really what causes the difference in phenotypes is the amount of melanin, the protein that is produced. So uh, when we look at this, I also want to remind you that we have two copies, though, right? It's not just, oh, I have one brown eye uh, allele, so I'm going to have brown eyes. I have one blue eye allele, so I'm going to have blue eyes. It's not quite that simple because we inherited two copies. We inherited one from our dad and one from our mom. So this person here, though, that inherits two brown eye alleles, that means that both their copies of DNA, both their eye color genes say, yes, make a lot of melanin in your eyes. So they will have brown eyes. That will be their phenotype based on their genotype. Now, if a person though inherits one brown eye allele and a blue eye allele, now are they going to have one brown eye and one blue eye? No. When we look at what happens here, their brown eye allele has the directions on how to make a lot of melanin. Their blue eye allele still codes for a little bit, but the big picture here is this. Having just one copy of this brown eye allele means they will make a lot of melanin, they will make a lot of that protein, and therefore they will have brown eyes. So in this example here, uh, the brown eye allele is the dominant allele. Now what that means though, dominant, uh, alleles, if you have just one dominant allele, you will make enough protein to determine the phenotype. So in order to have brown eyes, you can inherit two alleles and you'll make enough protein to have brown eyes, or you can inherit just one copy and that would be enough protein to give you brown eyes. So here we have two individuals with the same phenotype, but their genotypes are different because in dominant phenotypes, it only takes one copy in the genes in order to have you have that dominant phenotype. Now, when we look at recessive though, we look at like blue eyes. So if a person inherits two um, alleles that say have blue eyes, both their DNA directions are saying make less melanin. So they, they're missing the directions on how to make a lot. So therefore, for this person, it would be impossible to make brown eyes because they only have the directions on how to make blue eyes. So when we talk about recessive, recessive alleles uh, will only show up in the phenotype if there are no dominant alleles present. So the only way a person could have blue eyes is if they have two copies of that blue eye allele. Because if you had just one brown, then you'd have brown eyes. You'd make a lot of that protein. So an individual needs two copies of recessive alleles in order to express that particular phenotype. Okay, so we can add some more vocabulary words to these concepts. So a person that has uh, two copies, uh, two alleles that are the same, we call them homozygous. So the individual on the left here is homozygous for brown eyes, um, but brown is dominant, so we're gonna say homozygous dominant. 
because the person with blue eyes is also homozygous. They have two of the same alleles, homozygous. However, they're recessive alleles. Because if I tell you, oh, my husband is homozygous for eye color. You haven't met my husband. You don't know what color his eyes are. You wouldn't know, does he have brown eyes or blue eyes? So you have to clarify homozygous dominant or homozygous recessive. Now, the individual in the middle, though, has two different alleles, and we call that individual heterozygous. You don't have to say heterozygous dominant. Heterozygous is too different. So uh, if we were doing like problems with genetics, it would be very time consuming to uh, always write out heterozygous, homozygous recessive. So there's a way we can do like shorthand. Uh, and we use like letters in order to represent alleles. So for a dominant allele, you use a capital letter. And for a recessive allele, you use a lowercase letter. So when you see like in this um, PowerPoint here, so when you see two capital letters, that tells you, oh, their genotype is homozygous dominant. If you see two lowercase letters, that tells you their genotype is homozygous recessive. When you see a capital and a lowercase, that's telling you their genotype is heterozygous. Okay, good. So now let's go ahead and uh, connect to earlier in our video. So here, the eye color that you see, brown or blue, is our phenotype. And then the genes that you inherit, are you homozygous dominant? Are you heterozygous? Are you homozygous recessive? Those are going to be your genotypes. So you can see here how genotype determines phenotype. All right, so I'm going to stop there. Uh, good job. I'm going to try to stop. <laughs> there we go.